Hello and welcome to module three. For this module's Excel video, we are going to look at using equations in Excel. Some of these will be equations that you'll create yourself using different operation symbols, and some of them will be the preloaded equations that Excel gives us. If you're going to write an equation yourself, Excel requires you to put an equal sign before the equation. So if I just wrote add six to seven, all Excel sees is the statement add six to seven. Similarly, if I just wrote six plus seven, Excel again just reads that as a statement. If I want Excel to actually do the math for me, I need to put an equal sign in first, then equals six plus seven is telling Excel to do the addition for us. Anytime we want an equation where Excel does the work for us, we need an equal sign in front. Okay, I typed that out for us. Different operations include addition with the plus sign, subtraction with the subtraction, multiplication with the star, and division with the slash. You can also use powers. That's going to be a caret, or you can take the square root of a number, which is the symbol, or I'm sorry, the expression equals sqrt. Quick example, if I want 8 uh, times 2 minus 4, it's going to do order of operations. So 8 times 2 will give us 16, and then subtracting 4 should give us 12. Okay. If you want to do 2 to the fifth power, we'll do the equal sign 2 caret 5 and that gives us 32 because that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 where 2 is the base. Okay. If we want to do square root, suppose I want to know the square root of 25. SQRT, put in 25, we've got the square root. So these are some equations that you can build yourself. Let's hop over to sheet one with how to use supermarket sales. Here we've got different products and how much of that product was sold in a week. If I want to know the total number sold, there are a few different operations that we can use. First, we could say equals and then actually type out the numbers. So for lettuce in week one, we've got 15, then plus 22, week three was 12, plus 19 from week four, plus 25. Now that works fine since we have only five weeks, but suppose this covered an entire year. If it were a full year, then we'd have 52 weeks and typing in individual numbers can be kind of cumbersome. So another way to do this is to use cell references. Using cell references, means clicking on the cell and using the address of the cell in your operation. Whatever value you have in your cell will be what gets used. So if you change the value in the cell, your computation will change. Here I could have equals, and then for the four, I click on that and that gives me B5. Then plus, click on the six, that's C5. All right, keep going. You can see the equation is just in terms of cell references. Now there will be a problem on your Excel assignment where I'm asking for cell references, and I will check, did you actually do this? Hit enter, and I've got 23. All right, so I just typed up this little reference for you. Cell references use the address of the cell in the formula. Whatever value is in the cell will be used in the calculation. This result will change if you change a value in the cell. If I double click on it, I can see the equation here. My equation is solid. Suppose I change this from 4 to 40, though. Hit enter, and the equation automatically updates with the new value. Now, this is easier on us than writing out the actual numbers, but it still could be cumbersome if there were 52 weeks that we're looking at. So instead, I'm going to use the sum function, equals sum. Right. In the sum function, I'm saying use the function you named sum. Here's an open parenthesis, 
And now I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of the cells where I want the data to be added together. Notice this is B6 colon F6. Since the six doesn't change, that means it's all in the same row. Then we can do a closed parenthesis, hit enter, and it will add together all of the numbers that are here. Okay. If I do that again, equals sum, open parentheses, highlight all of this, close parentheses. Now I've got the sum for eggs. This is much faster than what we were doing before and is doable since I only have two more produce items left. Suppose though that I actually listed every item in the grocery store. I don't wanna to have to go through and write equals sum for all of them. So instead I'm going to use a little trick which is dragging equations, which populates other cells with that equation. So if I go back here, I've got the 104, double click. It's the sum from B7 to F7. I can click into this formula. In the cell, go to the lower right corner. See there's a little, block, uh, little box there. Hover your cursor over it until it's a little black plus sign. Click on the cursor, don't let go, and drag down. Okay. You'll see I've dragged down all the way through ketchup, and when I let go, it will populate with the sums. If I look at the ketchup formula, it's the sum of B9 to F9. If we look at the whole wheat formula, it's the sum of B8 to F8. So what this will do as I drag down, I'm going down rows, so it is changing the row values that I add together. Notice it did not change the column values. If I took this and dragged it over to the right, it's going to start changing column values and not row values. So this changed E to I instead of B to F, but it stayed with row 9. Okay. These numbers don't actually mean anything, though, so we're just going to delete them. So that is our total number sold for each product. Suppose I want to know the average number of lettuce heads sold or the average number of lentil soup cans sold per week. In that case, I can give it a header of the word average, and now I can enter the average function. If you already know it, you can just type it in, but if you're not sure, you can always look for the preloaded Excel functions with this little curly F with little X. Click on that. Over here, these are functions that you've recently used. If you want to find a function but you're not sure what it's called, type a brief description of what you want and click Go. So I want the average function. I'm going to type average, hit go. And there are all kinds of functions that are related to averages that pop up. The one that we want is the very first one, just average, A-V-E-R-A-G-E. -E. And you'll see the description returns the average or arithmetic mean of its arguments, which can be numbers or names, arrays or references, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to click OK now that I've selected average, and the GUI pops up for me to enter my information. Right now it's preloaded with B4 through G4. That would give me the average of all of the weeks, but it also includes the total number sold, which I don't want. So I'm going to delete that, and in number one, just highlight all of the values for lettuce from week one to week five. So you'll see that's B4 through F4. For number two, we don't need anything in it. Click OK, and now we have the average. Since I inserted the function for lettuce, I can grab it and scroll down. Now I have the average number sold for each category. For example, if I look at eggs, there were a total of 104 cartons of eggs sold, with an average of 20.8 cartons per week. Some other functions that are useful are maximum and minimum. Okay. So maximum value. Maximum value, the formula looks like equals max, open parenthesis. And again, you can look that up here if you need to. Since it's an open parenthesis, it wants you to say the list of numbers where to look. So I'm going to highlight this column. 
and the maximum number of any particular product was 20. Okay, I remember that looks like, oops, let's do uh, max open parenthesis. If you want it to do the actual work, you'll have to put the equal sign before the word max. Minimum value looks like this, min open parentheses. So if I want the minimum number of products sold in a week, it equals min open parenthesis. And then again, highlight all of week one, I've got this at two, which makes sense. If I look at this, two is the smallest number in this column. If I want to know the minimums for all of these columns, I can take this function and drag it over. Sometimes you'll want to drag a function, but you won't want the actual cell values to change. To do that, you'll put dollar signs around the cell references. So if I go back here and just look at total again, equals sum from here to here, same value I had over here. Right now, there are no dollar signs, so when I drag, it'll give me all the same values I had on this side. Okay. If I don't want the values to change, I'm going to put a dollar sign in. Okay, so here, before the B and before the 4, then before the F and before the 4. Now, if I take the same function and drag it again, you'll see they all become 93s. And when I click here, it's still B4 to F4. All right, that's a good start for equations. Take a look at your Excel assignment and let your instructor know if you have any questions.